Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we have a couple of Andor updates and we begin with something very interesting. The new Andor stars, as in the ones who are not in Rogue One or anything else, do not know what happens to their characters after this show. Now the series will eventually have to explain their absence, most likely in season 2 leading up to the events of Rogue One A Star Wars Story, but let's see what they said. Exclusive, Andor stars Denise Goff and Carl Sola hint at why their Andor characters are missing from Rogue One. The two actors say they're not quite sure of their future in the Star Wars universe. They say Andor being a prequel series means that the actors introduced in the show might have to speculate as to their futures. Of course, I'm sure a lot of them are going to be called back in a couple of months when production on season 2 begins, but for now, story-wise, they're not sure. In an interview with Screen Rants, Denise Goff and Carl Sola talked about their new characters, Dedra Moreau and Cyril Khan, and their eventual fate in this story, but Goff in particular shared she's aware of the arc of her story across both seasons, across all 24 episodes, but she's not been told what happened after, so presumably her character lives, and there have been reports of potential other spin-offs after the Andor show. Of course, over a year ago, Making Star Wars shared that they heard there's going to be a series centered around Saul Guerrero and his partisans, kind of tying in elements of Rebel Rising, Cassian Andor and Rogue One, but really focused on Saul, so if that's going to happen, she might still appear. This is what Denise Goff said, I know the journey through season 2, but I'm not in the movie, and she's of course talking about Rogue One, so I don't have to think about beyond that, I'm just kind of intrigued as to where Cyril and Dedra go, together or singularly, and could this be hinting at a possible romance? She goes on to say, I just know that there's a long journey ahead for her, but we can't rewrite the movie, nor would we want to so she is alive during Rogue One. I'd say the most likely explanation is that she's promoted through the ranks of the Empire, and whatever mission she's on by Zero BBY has nothing to do with Rogue One, nothing to do with the Death Star plans, and we've got to remember guys, the galaxy is a huge place, so while a lot of fans ask questions like this, and questions like where were Grogu and Din Djarin during the sequel trilogy, the galaxy is a huge place, they're not necessarily dead, they're probably off doing something completely different. And in many ways, instead of just killing off these characters, it does expand the universe a bit, because it allows us to have curiosity about where they went, and eventually they could tie this in with books, other shows, and tell the stories at a different time. Kyle Sola, speaking about Cyril Khan, jokingly says that maybe they start a dog kennel together. Again, kind of teasing a romantic subplot. The ever-expanding Star Wars universe means that characters' fates aren't confined to one portion of the story. The same goes for Reva, by the way. I briefly touched upon this yesterday, but her story could tie into the Jedi franchise, what they're doing with Jedi Survivor, but also the novels. Allowing the future of characters to be ambiguous, enables future storytelling possibilities, so in many ways I'm glad about this, but in the case of many other new characters, they might decide to kill them off if they've served their role in the series and there's nothing more for them, but Dedra Moreau and Cyril Khan look to be big players in the future of the Star Wars galaxy, especially concerning the Empire. And what's great about new series is you never know which characters are going to come out fan favourites, even Cassian Andor himself. A lot of fans love him from Rogue One, but I wouldn't call him a Star Wars fan favourite yet. I think Jago Luna is going to turn that around, and by the end of this series, we're all going to love him. And all of this talk about uncertain futures to do with the characters is really part of what Kathleen Kennedy said earlier this year. She talked about expanding the Star Wars saga, because a lot of fans complained the franchise is too insular, everyone knows each other, and the universe at times feels very small. Well, that's not the case with Andor, we already know the scope is going to be gigantic, and that's also going to be true with some of the characters. Even Diego Luna said, even though it's titled Andor, it's not just about him. I'm sure this series is going to introduce us to a whole host of new and familiar characters. Super exciting stuff, guys. Now let's move on to the second Andor update. This one is far more speculative, but a big question that Star Wars fans have had ever since Andor was first announced. Could we see other fulcrums like Ahsoka and Kalos in this show? Fulcrum, of course, was the code word for a network of spies that worked for the Rebellion. In the Clone Wars Season 7, it was a communications network used by Anakin to keep in contact with people like Saw Gerrera. Ahsoka also used this network to reach out to him prior to the Siege of Mandalore. Later, after the events of Order 66, Ahsoka took over Bail Organa's intelligence network and adopted the name Fulcrum for herself. She would use this well into the years of Star Wars Rebels, especially to make secret contact with Hera and the Ghost Crew. The title of Fulcrum is first used in Rebels, and others would pick up the mantle later, like Agent Callus, after he turned against the Empire. Now, the Rogue One visual guide also confirmed that Cassian Andor was a Fulcrum agent, so the main question is, could we see Ahsoka or other new Fulcrums in the Andor series? Personally, I think it's unlikely. Maybe she'll get a mention, and if she does appear, I think it's not going to be until Season 2. At the moment, as Ahsoka, we have Rosario Dawson, but she plays Ahsoka much later in the timeline. They could always make her have a cameo, but as I say, I think it's far more likely she'll just be mentioned or referenced. 
As for Agent Callus, I think there's a good chance he will appear in season 2, and the reason I say that is just based on the plot details that we know from the cast. Season 1 is all about Cassian's journey, and the focus is on him and Mon Mothma. Season 2, on the other hand, as Tony Gilroy confirmed, is going to have far more flexibility. And as I say, a third option is that we're going to see new Fulcrum agents altogether. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. And now, let's move on to our final Lander updates. This one concerns Tony Gilroy. Not too surprising, he's kind of hinted at this in the past, but this is the first time he's flat out said he is not a fan of the Star Wars universe in the sense of not being a diehard. Now, the last time this came up, a lot of fans spoke out and said, why would Lucasfilm allow him to be the showrunner of such an important series? Well, I'm going to put forward the possibility that him not being a Star Wars fan might be the biggest blessing for this franchise. You see, the Andor series is taking risks. It's not sticking to the playbook. And while you do have some amazing talented directors and producers who are Star Wars fans, notably Bryce Dallas Howard, Dave Filoni and John Favreau, having someone new, someone not necessarily familiar with all of the lore, come in and do something original with Star Wars might ironically make Andor one of the best Star Wars shows. Now, even though he's not the biggest Star Wars fan, he does know Star Wars, let's be real. He's spoken in the past about Pablo Hidalgo and Dave Filoni helping him along the way. He's got those lore masters behind him to help him. But not only that, he was the screenwriter for Rogue One, so clearly he knows what he's doing. So it would be very easy to hyperbolize, but bear in mind, he's proven his talent. But let's see what he said in this new interview with Game Rant. Andor showrunner Tony Gilroy says he's not exactly a huge Star Wars fan, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. When the filmmaker co-wrote the script to Rogue One, fans likely assumed that he had a particular passion for the galaxy far, far away, just like we do. After all, while the movie may have its faults, it's still considered one of the best, if not the best, Disney Star Wars film. Some of Gilroy's decisions on that movie are absolutely outstanding and define the movie for what it is. Notably, Gilroy takes credit for a lot of decisions surrounding Jin Erso and the rebellious, no BS taking character she ended up being. But now that Gilroy is serving as showrunner for the upcoming Rogue One spin off and or, he has even more creative freedom, which is why it's pretty jaw dropping in a new edition of SFX magazine. Tony Gilroy makes one thing very clear he is not a fan fan of Star Wars. Now, it doesn't mean he hates it. While he didn't elaborate, one thing that seems very consistent across all of these interviews is his dislike for the force and lightsabers, one thing he promises is not in this show. Now while he could just be playing coy and trying to get fans attention to watch the series, there is a very good chance he's dead serious and simply does not want to add any of that into the Andor show. Now as a result we might get a show that just doesn't feel Star Warsy at all and in that sense it'd be kind of sad to miss out on that magic, but I suspect what's going to happen is we're going to end up with a series that does something new. Regardless of what Gilroy says, we still have the Empire, the Rebellion, Cassie and Andor, Saw Gerrera, Mon Mothma, characters and concepts that we're familiar with, so it is still going to be a Star Wars series. Him adding something new doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be bad for the franchise. In fact, you might argue we could use that refreshment, something very different. But from the leaks, rumours and reviewers, the good news is that there is some familiarity. A couple of the leaks stated that Gilroy is talking BS and there are a few surprises which you could call fan service. And look, before we panic, Tony Gilroy is very talented and he's not the only person on the show. There are other producers, there are higher ups. He would have consulted Dave Filoni, Pablo Hidalgo, Doug Chang and others to ensure nothing in the series breaks canon. And on top of this, in case you don't remember, I covered when he talked about the animated shows, kind of teasing, he watched Star Wars Rebels in preparation. So Star Wars might not be his favourite thing in the world, but that doesn't mean he's not going to create a kick-ass series. I'm super excited, I hope you guys are too. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below of everything we spoke about. If you enjoyed this one guys, as always, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up. So Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. May the Force be with you always. I'm Star Wars Meg. Have a good one.